Okay, good afternoon everyone. Uh, today I'll be presenting um, um, an exploration on global terrorism data. So just a brief outline of what I'll be talking about this afternoon. Um, I'll just be talking about the, a bit about the data set. It's a global terrorism database. Um, where it's from and uh, just a brief um, introduction to it. Also, um, why terrorism? Um, uh, why is it important? Um, next is uh, terrorism by the numbers, just um, some basic exploration, um, simple graphs about the data, and also uh, how terrorism looks like from country to country, so terrorism globally, and just uh, some short closing remarks. So first, the global terrorism database. So uh, the database is actually maintained by uh, START, or the National Consortium for the Study of Terrorism and Responses to Terrorism. So START is a research and education center for the study and causes of uh, and effects of terrorism um, around the world. So um, START is also a center of excellence by uh, the Department of Homeland and Security, and it's actually headquartered in the University of Maryland. So basically the Global Terrorism Database, it gathers all the incidents of terrorism globally around the world. So it's a highly comprehensive and consistent terrorism incident data set, uh, beginning from 1970, and the latest is until 2014. So the data collection methodology is actually very interesting. Um, it's a combination of uh, automated and manual data collection strategies. Um, so some of which include uh, natural language processing and some machine learning techniques. Uh, so first, uh, the researchers, they, they get like a million, um, more than a million media articles about data, uh, about uh, terrorist data. And then they filter that using the um, automated strategies. And then after that, when they have a subset, a much smaller subset, then they manually go over it to make sure that things don't repeat and things are actually uh, consistently terrorist incidents based on their own definition of it. So why terrorism? Well, um, in a recent um, survey by Gallup, um, said that one in six Americans said that uh, terrorism was the most important issue facing the U.S. Um, and that was back in, that was last December. So this is surprising because before then, uh, prior surveys, um, the issue mostly, the issue that mostly topped was government and the economy. So, in fact, when, um, Terrorism reached 16% in that survey. That was the highest. Uh, that was the highest in a decade. And the, the the previous time that terrorism, as an issue, as an important issue, uh, topped in, in that survey was back in 9/11 uh, after the 9/11 incident. So uh, this survey was taken after um, the San Bernardino attacks and also a few weeks after the Paris attacks, which. Um, they say is one of the worst terrorist incidents in Europe in the in the last uh, since in, in eleven years. So some of the things I wanted to um, look into the data set. Uh, the the data set is very large, um, with over with over one hundred thirty variables. So it is very complicated and. Um, uh, overwhelming on, on what variables to, to, to try and look at. So I, I just stuck to like the basics and just kind of, uh, you know, um, going over like just like the uh, surface. So like what, what is the average number of attacks per year and what are the types of attacks based on uh, the definition and the classifications of START and also how do casualties compare across um, the different kinds of attacks. So terrorism by the numbers. So since 1970, there are actually, on average, uh, about 3,200 attacks 
per year. And over the same period on average, more than 7,000 deaths a year due to those terrorist attacks. So first I wanted to look at the trend of um, terrorist attacks throughout that time period, so from 1972 to 2014. Uh, an interesting thing, an interesting trend I saw was that, um, so there seems to be a dip in uh, the number of attacks from the mid-90s, and then so uh, it reached a low somewhere here in, which is about 2004, and then um, it just surged to, um, towards the late, after like 2009. Um, if you'll notice, uh, you'll, you'll notice a blank, a blank space here. That's 1993. So, um, just a brief backstory. Um, there were different groups covering the global terrorist data set, and so when um, when they all merged into START, so uh, they lost they lost the 1993 um, data. So hence, they don't include it in the data set. And then next is um, so next um, start classifies terrorist attacks by about nine different types. So these consist of armed assault, assassination, bombings, um, hijacking, and two kinds of hostage taking. So what was interesting is that almost half, almost 50% of all terrorist attacks are made up of um, bombings or explosions. And then uh, the next most common are armed assault and um, assassination by 24% and 12% respectively. So next I wanted to see what... Next, I want to see um, the trend of those certain attacks per year. So, as you can see um, from the graph, um, bombings and explosion type of types of attacks uh, really increased during this period, um, during the maybe like the last uh, the last decade. Whereas and then whereas before they were it was kind of equal with um, other attacks such as armed assault and assassination. So also what was interesting about the data set was they also classified things uh, such as the weapons used in uh, those certain attacks. So these include biological, chemical, explosives, fake weapons, and things like that. So not surprisingly, of course, since uh, it seems the most common type of attack were explosions and um, bombings, um, half of the weapons used in all terrorist attacks were explosives. And about a third were consisted of uh, firearms. So next, I wanted to see um, the gravity of a terrorist attack. So... Um, I believe this can be measured by the number of casualties. So previously, I was looking at the, the number of attacks, but um, I want to see the gra I want the gravity in the sense that the number of casualties each attack uh, had. So here, an in an interesting thing I took from the graph, <coughs> from the visual vi visualization of this, was that um, casualties actually decreased from 2007 to 2011. So this was interesting because the trend of the number, the, the trend of just attacks itself, they remained consistent throughout that period, and there was no decline. And then I also uh, looked at this in terms of the kinds of attacks. So, so what was interesting here was that. Um, Despite bombings and explosions being the most common type of attack, um, back, back during this period, they actually didn't cause that many deaths. Whereas uh, when you, moving on to here, like after about 2005, 
There's a surge in, in, in the share of deaths caused by bombings and explosions. And then uh, just looking at terrorism from country to country, how does it look like? So um, I created a geo chart to reflect that. So these are all the attacks from 1970 to 2014. And we can see by the darker green that uh, most of these attacks were, um, the largest number of attacks were actually concentrated in the South, South Asia bordering the Middle East. So India with about 9,000, 9, Pakistan 11,500. Um, if you look at the ranking, um, so Iraq and Pakistan were in the top two. Um, my country, the Philippines, was in the top nine, and the United States was in the top 15. So just uh, some closing remarks. Uh, just to summarize my findings, so there are numerous types of terrorist attacks with bombings and armed assault as the most common. And there was also a period of improvement, if you could say that, from 2007 to 2011, when casualties from terrorist attacks fell despite the steady number of attacks themselves in the same period. So despite being the most common type of attack, bombing, bombings only overtook or took a bigger share of casualties uh, versus armed assault uh, after 2004. So just some things that I would like, I would have liked to explore more. Um, I would have liked to see casualties per, per attack, sort of see like um, the gravity of each attack, and then see that how that changed throughout the years. And then um, also what specific countries experienced more attacks in those recent years. And then also um, in that interesting um, slight divergence of number of attacks and number of casualties, what could have been the possible causes in that uh, difference in trend. So that about wraps up my presentation this afternoon. Uh, thank you. Yes. Something, something of that nature for this slide. Um, does anyone have an idea on maybe a way in which we can improve upon this graph such that it would be clearer to see the increase in bombing, given something that we've talked about in class? Um, rearranging them by the count so that they would be at the top of the stack. Uh, actually, maybe, I didn't think of that, but actually, uh, maybe the bottom. I don't know what it's called, but what it just shows the, the share of each one. Right, know. so the fill. We could have done a position equals fill for this one so that you can see the growth in proportion of the bomb. Um, still a great graphic, but it, it might be easier to see that specific insight with a slight modification. So, like as a percentage? Yes. Um, and uh, about, let's go to slide 20 as well. This is actually kind of funny. I'll show you guys something tomorrow morning. Anytime you present anything of this nature, it's pretty important to normalize by population. So I just want to double check if you were able to normalize by population because we might be seeing, I guess, India coming out as one of the higher terrorism attack places simply because there's more people living there. Right. You know what I mean? So um, it's a good thing to know this is accurate by raw counts, but we need to be careful about population, right? So maybe the country that only has Do you know what I mean? Like, whatever. Uh, Canada is 69. Does, uh, does China report it? China? Yeah. Are there any other questions? Well, thank you so much.